this day. There are those who take a day for granted, but the reality is that none of us can take any day for granted. The disciple must be a student. You may be seated. The disciple must be a student of the Word of God. It is impossible to be a disciple of Christ and not be a student of his word. So the disciple must learn from God through his word. If you're not in the word, then the question should be, what are you in? Can you hear me? So I, I believe that it is necessary on our part as committed disciples to constantly read the word of God, study the word of God, hear the word, Believe the word, become the word, obey the word. Hear the word, believe the word, become the word, obey the word. Hear the word, believe the word, become the word, obey the word. Hear the word, believe the word, become the word, obey the word. Now, now keep that rolling around in your head. So, Paul talks about what that looks like in practice. In the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, the word of God says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So God is not unreasonable. He's not asking us to do anything unreasonable. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to the transgender movement. Do not be conformed to the R. Kelly impact. Do not be conformed to the Smollett, whatever his name is. Beat himself up so that he could get a raise. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, that is to test, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, Paul urges every believer to prove yourself. Prove to yourself, prove to others, what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. So it stands to reason that if, if you are a born again believer, you do not know God's revealed will for your life unless you're studying his word. If you are a born again believer and you do not know what God's plan is for you, you're cheating yourself. You're living beneath your privilege. People who don't read the Bible have no idea how low they are beneath their privilege. I don't mean they're bad people because we're not talking about that. What I mean is that you're living at, at a place where you were supposed to be much higher than. But because you don't know the word of God, the enemy is able to trick us and trap us. Can you hear me? So, you're cheating yourself. You're living beneath your privilege and you're grieving the Holy Spirit. According to scripture, God is revealed in a way that you don't have to guess. His revealed will is right in our face. First of all, you know here that it is good. It is good in itself. So the disciple must be on the alert to not be conformed to whatever else is going on around them. But instead, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that mean? It means you push the garbage out and you bring the gold in. Get rid of the trash. Bring in the treasure. It is good in itself because it is God's will. Let it sink in. 
It's good for you. It's good for me. It's good to you. And it's good to me. It's good to us who are born again believers and everybody ought to be a born again believer and they must be that in order to miss hell. So in the will of God, the believer can claim his promises. For the Lord God is a, is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withheld from those who walk uprightly. We can claim that. The, the, the key word, I believe, in his promise is that he gives. But if you don't know that, you keep trying to work for it. And get it on credit cards. And more credit cards, more work. More credit, more work. Off the work I go, because I owe, I owe. The Lord God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And this, this giver is a sun and a shield, S-U-N, sun and shield. He, he is the light of the world to guide you every step, not just every now and then and on Sunday, but every step, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it doesn't matter. That, that's, his, that's what he does. He guides us. He lights up our pathway for us so that every step we make is a step that he is directing. He gives grace and glory. That's what the scripture says. So that's a promise. He gives grace and glory. That means I don't have to worry about competing with my brother and my sister trying to be better. I'm trying to show that I'm not as bad as they say I am. Do that. Yeah, maybe once upon a time he did, but you don't have to do it. Because according to scripture, I am who I am in Christ. And that's an already done deal. Anybody listening? That's an already done deal. Anybody listening? Yes, an already done deal. Anybody listening? That's an already done deal. Anybody hear what I'm saying? That's an already done deal. Yeah, I used to be that, but that was then. This is now. I'm going that way. So the disciple then must study the word.
elders of this body to the members of Greater Calvary Bible Church. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, because you are God. You are God. You are God. Oh, Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you will bless the word that has been prepared. And dear Father, you make it what you choose it to be. Open our hearts and open our ears. Help us to open our hearts and open our ears. Help us to focus on your word. Dear Father, so that we might receive the thing that is necessary for us to move, to shout, to praise, to overcome, to get through, to heal, to restore, whatever it is. Just, since you do nothing by accident, and we're here for a purpose, dear God, that help us to receive that which we need today for tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ who is able to keep us. Yes. Amen. 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 Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 21 is what we read. And we're just simply going to talk about a call to worship. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. It says, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, but perhaps is the message itself. There is no excuse. We have no excuse. For God has made it very plain to us through his creation. If you can open your eyes, and see what God has made, then you have no excuse. If you can hear what God has made, you have no excuse. If you can touch, if you can taste, see there's, there's no excuse, so you can't say I'm, I'm this or I'm that or I'm this or I have it because no matter what senses you might choose to use, we have no excuse to worship our God, to yeah. not worship yeah. him. Yeah. See, this, this is an unpleasant message to those who reject uh -huh. the reality that is God. Yeah. Yeah. People who reject God, people, God, see, God is our reality, he's our truth. Uh -huh. He is our every thing. There is nothing that exists outside of God for the believer. Colossians 1.16 says, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Christ is the one. Because of the Lord's God's awesome power and majesty, our God is majestic. He is deserving of the highest level of reverence. 
reverence. We give reverence to God. The highest level of reverence. Well, what is reverence? And I'm glad you asked because it helps me get to this point. Reverence is honor and respect that is deeply felt and outwardly demonstrated. Honor and respect that is deeply felt. It's not surface. It's not on the top. It's not just a moment in time. It's, it's something that's deep down but it is outwardly demonstrated. So you're not afraid to show it. It's the thing that you, you, you just, you have to see. Reverence is the automatic response of everyone who encounters the awesome, awesome grandeur of the Lord God Almighty. See, when you, when you come into the presence of God, it should be an automatic response to give God reverence. one time and the angels were and I know God can send angels wherever he chooses but I just believe the word of God and I believe that if the angel was present and had made himself known then you would not be standing there in his presence you would not just be going around doing what you want to do in his presence because what find that his 
the covenant. Yes, and they were not to touch it as a matter of reverence. Yes. You had to be part of the priesthood. Yes. You, you couldn't just be anyone. Wow. You couldn't just, couldn't, it didn't matter what was going on. You just couldn't touch it. Just couldn't touch it. We had that one time when we set aside our clothes. Uh -huh. These are set aside for church. Don't wear those anywhere else other than church. So that was reverent. You know, we were, we, were, we were sanctifying our clothes. We were setting aside a special. So when we put, when we got our check, we, we, we immediately put money aside. We set it aside because this is for God. And I don't want any accidents to happen because we must present ourselves unto the Lord. The purpose of such strict rules was to define holiness and impress upon mankind the necessity of reverence in the presence of the Lord. In the Holy of Holies, it required the highest level of reverence. And that was the inner chamber of the sanctuary. And it was separated by a veil from the outer chamber. So here you have the temple. And here we are in the outer. But here would be the inner. And this would have been separated by a veil. And only those, the high priest, would be able to go in once a year to make the day during the day of atonement. And whoever disobeyed God's command about entering the Holy of Holies died instantly. Aaron's boys went in with profane fire. They went in playing. They went in with something else other than holiness. They went in with an attitude that was not holy. Their mindset was not holy. They didn't come. They came in here because it was just another thing. It was routine to them. It became a ritual to them. It wasn't important. It wasn't reverent. And they died. Instantly. It wasn't over time. They, they dragged them back out. In the New Testament, Christianity, reverence for God is demonstrated by our willingness to voluntarily die to self and to obey his commands. And we demonstrate reverence for God by the way we live. By the way we live. So it's not by your Sunday's best, but how you live. How shall we, how, how shall we live without Without any excuses. There are no excuses. We don't have any for living less than. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. You make a choice not to see God. You make a choice not to hear God. You make a choice not to, to reach out, to not, to not talk to God. But we must pursue holiness because he is holy. He is holy. Reverend people desire to say no to ungodliness and worldly possessions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. You ought to just want to live a certain way. You ought to just want to live upright. You ought to want to be self-controlled. There ought to be a desire to be self-controlled. 1 John 2, 15 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life come not from the Father, but from the world. The world and his desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. 
We show reverence for God by learning how to truly worship Him. Yes. In spirit and in truth. True worship is not about your favorite song. And I have some. They were sung today, song. It's not, it's not confined to an emotional experience or tingly feeling. True worship is a lifestyle. True worship is a lifestyle. So when you're at school, worship should be occurring of the way, the way you live at school, the way you live at home, the way you live at the store, the way you live at the doctor's office, the way you live on your job, the way you live as you walk down the street. It's a lifestyle. Worship. True worship is a lifestyle. We, we worship in spirit when our hearts are empty before the Lord. That is, when we're willing, 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 willing to obey everything he has said. You might struggle doing some of it, but you, you desire. I desire to please We, we read the word of God, we, we talk to each other about it, we share, we, we pray over it, and we ask God because we want ourselves, our minds to be filled, renewing our, our minds. Yes, to worship God is to know him and to serve him. To worship him the way he deserves to be worshipped, we must align our hearts yeah. with his yes. and seek to obey him. Human beings were created to worship God. So reverence is the natural response of a heart that has been transformed by the Holy Spirit. You can tell people who just love God. Especially if they've gone through something. Whatever that something is. In their life, it was God transformed them from where they were to where they are right now. But it's just this.
We live with the knowledge that the creator of the universe is intimately involved in our every move. It's intimate. It's, 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 once we heard it was into me, it's just, it's, it's, it's just a, a personal connection. It's, 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 within, it's not, you know, because we all have to make a choice. We all have to make our own choice. That's the kind of God we serve. He, he's, he's personable. He's, he, he, he speaks to me. This word is going forward and every person is hearing it and seeing it and receiving it the way that they receive it. A wise person reverences and obeys and fears the Lord. A fool despises God's instruction and cannot be told what to do. The understanding that our God of love is also a God of wrath inspires enough fear to help us stay away from evil. Sin is foolish. Righteousness is wise. And when we live righteously, we, we are on the path to wisdom. Yeah. And everyone in our lives benefit. Yeah, on, benefit one another. Everyone in our lives benefit. Yeah. For I am not ashamed yeah. of the gospel of Christ. Yeah. For it is the power of God to salvation to every, everyone who believes. Yeah. Yeah. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Yeah. As it is written, the what? just shall live by faith. It is not necessary then for us to have to prove God. I don't have to prove God. I don't need to be in that discussion with you. God provides the proof in his created work and his word. For everyone who does not believe in the created work of God is making a choice to suppress the truth by their wickedness. And this suppression it's reflected in their attempt to define God by their own terms. Yeah. Which is not the God that we serve as believers. I mean, what kind of God would he be if we could define him with our finite minds? Yeah. Certainly not a God that can cure cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly not a God that can deliver from crack cocaine. Yeah. Certainly not a God that can restore a broken heart. Yeah. I mean, what He gave his own. 
as your Lord and Savior. That's a done deal. 